I'm John Robert Franklin, and today we're going over that oh-so-classy martini. And hopefully answer that age-old question, shaken or stirred. Of course, everyone wants to be like James Bond when they order their martinis. Oh, well, that charming son of a bitch had to open up his big, dumb, beautiful mouth and utter the words that'll haunt bartenders forever, shaken, not stirred. Shaken, not stirred. Shaken, not stirred. Shaken. Now, if you've been following along with the previous episodes, I'm sure you have heard me say, if there's no citrus in the cocktail, it's usually a stirred cocktail. And the traditional martini does not have citrus. Another debate surrounding this classic is the amount of dry vermouth. Is it a half ounce, a quarter ounce, a bar spoon? Do you just wave the bottle around the cocktail? Or do you just seductively look at it from afar while you stir the cocktail? And honestly, all are valid options. But today, we're gonna go with a more traditional build on the martini as to set you up with a baseline. Then you can tweak the ratios however you like for your preferred dryness of your martini. Another choice for a martini is vodka or gin. Again, preference. I prefer gin, but to each their own. And the last choice, do you want an olive? Do you want a lemon twist? Do you want a cocktail onion? Which technically makes it a Gibson, but trust me, you do. But in all honesty, everything has its place and time when it comes to the martini. Especially when you start to do riffs on a martini. Like one of my all-time favorites, the Vesper. But for now, let's just start with that sweet, sweet face-numbing classic, the OG martini. All right, so the classic build on a martini is two ounces of London dry gin and a quarter ounce of dry vermouth. Now the distinction of London dry gin is an important one because gin has a lot of different styles in which it's distilled in. Each has their own purpose as well as distinct flavor profiles. There's London dry gin, which is characterized by its big hitting botanicals such as juniper. You have navy strength gin, which is known for its higher ABV of at least 57%. You have Plymouth gin, which was once known as the big rival to the London dries, distilled in the town of Plymouth, England, and known for its drier, more citrusy notes. You have Old Tom Gin, which is known for its sweeter flavor from botanicals like licorice. You have Jennifer from Holland, distilled from malted grains. And you have New Western Gins, distilled using other flavors like honey. One that you may know is Bar Hill, known for that lovely and light classic, the Bee's Knees. But all that being said, I believe the best gin to reach for when making that classic martini is the London Dry, or something made in a similar way. And again, in this cocktail, we're using dry vermouth, and there are many different brands of dry vermouth. All will accomplish generally the same thing when making your martini. You will notice between different distillers, different flavor profiles though within your dry vermouths. Some are a little more crisp and clean. Some may have notes of pine or other botanicals. So have fun and experiment with different dry vermouths. Find the one that you like best. Today, I'm using martini and Rossi. It's what I had on hand. So when making the martini, I always prefer stirred. Some people like it shaken. I think it should be stirred. I always think it should be stirred. We're gonna grab our mixing glass. We're gonna grab our glassware and our jigger. All right, so we always wanna work from the cheapest ingredients to the most expensive ingredients. So we start with our quarter ounce, the dry vermouth, go into our two ounces of gin. Remember that's all the way to the brim of the large side of the jigger. I'm gonna grab our ice. I'm gonna make sure that ice comes above the liquid. I'm gonna grab our bar spoon and we're gonna to wanna to stir for 20 seconds. So place the back side of that spoon and the edge of the mixing glass. The handle you want between your ring and your middle finger like that. And you can grab the top with your pointer and your thumb and just let it rotate around in your fingers and let your wrist rotate around as well. And you're gonna wanna stir consistently for 20 seconds. Don't mind my plant just shaking around. All right, grab your julep strainer, your Hawthorne strainer. You don't need to double strain stirred cocktails. That's only shaking cocktails. Pour it in your glass. Now pick your garnish. You got cocktail onions, olives, or maybe even a lemon twist. I go with the onion, personally. Let's give it a try. Super clean. You get the botanical notes from the gym. That juniper really comes through strong. I think it's a perfect level of dry vermouth, that quarter ounce. Uh, important note on the dry vermouth, uh, a drier martini actually has less vermouth. I know it seems ass backwards, but that's the way it is. Now you know. All right, moving on. Now, as I mentioned before, James Bond ruining martini culture by uttering those words shaken, not stirred. There is a silver lining there, and that is the creation of the Vesper. Personally, this is my favorite version of the martini. And even though 007 ordered it shaken and not stirred, I'm thankful to the bartenders that corrected them and made this classic a stirred cocktail. And we're gonna stir it here. 
because stirring this cocktail gives it the proper mouthfeel, the proper clarity, and doesn't agitate the ice too much while still giving the proper dilution. All right, so for the Vesper, let's grab our mixing glass again. We're gonna grab our glassware, always a stem glassware with the Vesper as well. Grab our jigger, and as I mentioned, always start with the cheapest ingredients first. So, a half ounce of Lille Blanc Vermouth. Then, we need a half ounce of our comically large vodka bottle that we got as a gift during the holidays. Oh, it's so hard to pour this thing. Jesus. Nope. Three quarter. Half ounce. And one and a half ounces of gin. Grab our ice. So there's enough ice to cover the liquid. Grab our bar spoon. Again, stirring for 20 seconds. All right, 20 seconds. Grab your julep strainer, your Hawthorne strainer. No need to double strain our stirred cocktails. Pour that right into our glass. Garnish with a lemon twist. There she is, the Vesper. Super refreshing. Light, citrusy from the lemon peel. Honestly, my favorite, favorite riff on the martini. Now this is a great demonstration of Blanc Vermouth versus Dry Vermouth. With Blanc Vermouth, you're gonna get a little bit sweeter notes and it's gonna give a little fuller mouthfeel than a Dry Vermouth. So, as I said before, the martinis, there's no citrus, so we don't shake them, we stir them. Here's the exception to the rule that oh so dirty, dirty, dirty martini. And I love the dirty martini. It's cold, it's briny, it's boozy, and it's one of those basic pitch cocktails that we all love. And this is the exception to the shake and not stir rule on a martini. And even though there's no citrus juice, there is going to be olive juice or some sort of a briny juice in there. So it works better shaken. And it's a super simple build. So let's start by grabbing our glassware. I'm gonna make two different dirty martinis today, just as a little bonus. We wanna grab, our short side of our shakers, grab our jigger, and we're gonna start with the cheapest ingredients first. So, on the right, we're gonna make the traditional dirty martini with olive juice. You're gonna want an ounce of olive juice. And you could go more, you could go less, depending on how dirty you like it. I think an ounce is a, an amazing level. And again, with this, you can go gin or vodka. I go gin, personally. So you're gonna go two ounces of gin. Now for our other shaker. We are going to make a caper dirty using caper juice. So we need an ounce of caper juice, two ounces of gin, and we're gonna need some ice for both. Make sure we fill the short side of the shaker all the way to the top with ice. Put our left shaker, now we're gonna close each side. Important to remember which is which. I got my olive, I got my caper. Shaking for 12 seconds. Crack your chin. Remember, right here, grab with your fingers around the closed side, right in the crease of your hand, and hit right next to your thumb. You'll get that nice crack. Grab your Hawthorne strainer, grab your basket strainer. This is our caper dirty. Same thing, inside of your hand, close side of the shaker, squeeze, hit by your thumb. There it is. Grab your Hawthorne strainer once again. Grab your basket strainer and your glass. This is our olive dirty. Garnish the traditional martini with our olive brine with either one or three olives. And we're gonna garnish the caper martini with a little bar spoon of capers. There you have it. Two fabulous versions of the dirty martini. Let's taste. 
traditional, everything you'd expect from a dirty. Clean and crisp from shaking, gets super cold, gets a little of that body with the olive juice. Now for the caper dirty. Oh, yeah, that is amazing. That is, there's so much complexity there with all the flavor from the capers. It is filthy, it is salty and briny and delicious. It's fucking fabulous. All right, guys, so there it is, our classic martini build, technically a Gibson with that cocktail onion. We got the Vesper with that citrusy note and hit from the, from the lemon twist. We got our caper dirty martini, so filthy, so fabulous. And we got our traditional dirty martini with the olives. I hope you all enjoyed these recipes today. Maybe you made them along with me. Maybe you're writing these recipes down for a later date. But either way, let me know how you're liking the cocktails. And guys, become a regular somewhere. Become a regular at your local watering hole. It's the best way to support local business. And become a regular here at Happiness Bar by liking, commenting, subscribing. Hit that bell if you want notifications. We got cocktail videos coming out every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Stay happy, everyone. Important note, when garnishing a martini with olives, it's always one or three. Never two, never four. Always odd numbers, one or three. I don't know why, but this knowledge has been passed down from bartender to bartender, so I figured I'd pass it along to you as well.